Let's work through a longer example of binary hypothesis testing. So here we're going to say that given that H0 occurs, Y is binomial with parameter N equals three and parameter P equals one half. When H1 occurs, Y is binomial also three, but then three fourths. So basically success is more likely under H1. Now, these two uh, conditional distributions for Y could be anything that we wanted. I've picked them in this particular way for this example to keep things very simple. In later videos, we'll do more complicated examples, but this is one that allows me to work out all of the details very carefully. So remember that the PMF for a binomial NP random variable looks like the following. So we have the marginal PMF P of X of X, which is N choose X, P to the X, one minus P to the N minus X, and that's when X is zero up to N, and otherwise it's zero. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, in the H0 conditional PMF, that means I'm going to plug in three for N and one half for P, and I'm going to get a PMF that looks like this, okay, from zero to three, All right? And I can expand this out term by term, which I wanna do. So I'm gonna have three choose zero times one eighth, when y equals zero, three choose one times one eighth, when y equals one, three choose two times one eighth, when y equals two, and finally three choose three times one eighth, when y is equal to three. So that's gonna overall be one eighth for y equals zero, three eighths for y equals one, three eighths for y equals two, and one eighth for y equals three. For the conditional PMF given that H1 occurs, I have three choose y, three fourths to the y, one fourth to the three minus y, again, when y is equal to zero, one, two, or three, okay? And there I'm going to see uh, three choose zero times one over 64, when y equals zero, three choose one times one, or three over 64, when y is equal to one, three choose two times nine over 64, when y is equal to two, and three choose three times 27 over 64, when y is equal to three. So working this all out, I get one over 64, when y is zero, nine over 64, when it's one, 27 over 64, when it's two, and again, 27 over 64, when it's three. So I'm gonna fill this all out in a table, which is gonna make things a little easier for me later. So I'm just filling out the entries of this table with the values of these conditional PMFs. And I wanna figure out what is the ML rule in this case. And the ML rule, if you remember, is just take the conditional PMFs and decide the hypothesis with the larger uh, conditional probability at that value, okay? So if P of Y given H1 is bigger, pick H1, otherwise pick H0. Tie is going to H1. So where is it bigger? Okay, so 1 8 is bigger here, so that goes to zero, 3 8 here, that goes to zero, 27 over 64 here, and again, those go to two and three. So the decision zero goes on zero one, and the decision one goes on two, three. So if you remember this A zero, was our notation for the part of the range of y where we're deciding zero. And in this case, that's when the uh, y is equal to zero and one. And a one was where we were deciding one, and that's when it's two or three. Okay, with that in mind, so we just summarize all of that here. Let's figure out what is the probability of error for this decision rule. Okay, so now I know that when y is equal to zero and one, I'm gonna say zero, and when it's two or three, I'm gonna say one. What's the chance I make an error when I'm doing that? Well, the probability of error is just going to be the probability of false alarm times the probability of H0 plus the probability of misdetection times the probability of H1. And this is on the previous video. But the problem is I don't have these values and really I should have been given them at the very outset. So this problem is a little unusual I just wanna draw your attention to this fact that in order to calculate the probability of error for the ML rule, you need these values. I'm just going to give them to you. Okay, so what's interesting about the ML rule is I don't need to know these values to calculate the rule itself, but I do need them to analytically work out the performance of the rule. Let's just say probability of H0 is one fifth, probability of H1 is four fifths. So then the probability of false alarm from the formula in the previous video is just summing up over A1 the conditional PMF of Y given H0. So I'm just gonna circle in green where this is happening, okay? So I have the probability of Y given 
h0 of 2, and the probability of y given h0 of 3. Those are these 3 8 and 1 8 terms. Okay, and the reason I did that is I looked and I saw that um, a1 is 2 and 3, so I just summed up those values. For misdetection, I'm going to get a very similar thing, except now I'm summing over a0, the conditional PMF given h1. Okay, so in orange, I have 1 over 64. That is the same kind of idea. And then plus 9 over 64, I'm going to get 5 over 32 overall. Okay, so I just weight these two things together by the probabilities of their hypothesis. I get 1 half times 1 fifth plus 5 30 seconds times 4 fifths. Overall, I get 9 over 40. Okay, so just to um, wrap this up, can we do better than that? Can I get a lower probability of error than 9 over 40? And it turns out I can in this case. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to determine the map rule and its probability of error. And okay, we're going to see in this case it gets me a better performance. All right, well, let's see what it is. The map rule, if you remember from the previous video, it just says decide the most likely hypothesis, which is equivalent to taking the conditional PMF and weighting it by its hypothesis probability and then picking the bigger of the two. So if P of Y given H1 at Y times the probability of H1 is bigger than the probability of Y given H0 at Y times the probability of H0, I'm going to pick H1. Otherwise, I'm going to pick H0. Ties are going to go to H1. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking this entire table and I am from above and I'm reweighting the entries of the table by the hypothesis probability. So on the top row, I weight them by one fifth because probability of H0 we decided was one fifth. And on the bottom, I'm going to weight them by four fifths. Okay. So I'm just recalculating the entries of this table that I had above. I'm re I'm just multiplying them by these hypothesis probabilities, and I'm getting some new values. Okay, and these are the values I'm going to use to make up my decision rule. Okay, so I need to pick the highest values. So let's get started. So for the map rule of y, I'm going to pick y equals, I'm going to pick 1 sometimes and 0 sometimes. So in this first entry, I'm going to pick 0 because 1 over 40 is higher. Then I'm going to pick 1 because 9 over 80 is higher. Then 2 because 27 over 80 is higher. And again, 3 because 27 over 80 is higher. So basically, um, all but the first coordinate go to um, decision 1. So I'm going to weight the probabilities of false alarm and misdetection by the hypothesis probabilities to get them. I'm just going to multiply together, or sorry, just add up all of the conditional probability values of h given h0 over the range of a1. Okay, so it's going to be this value, right? So 1 plus the value at 2 plus the value at 3. And the reason I'm doing that is that for 1, 2, and 3, I'm always going to decide h1. So when h0 occurs there, I'm going to make mistakes. So that means 7 eighths of the time that h0 occurs, I'm going to make a mistake on it. And that's going to turn out to be okay, even though it's a lot. For misdetection, I'm just summing up over this one entry where I'm deciding h0. That's going to be this 1 over 64 term, okay? And so I'm just getting 1 over 64. And the reason I'm getting a lower probability here is the weighted combination of these times 1 fifth and 4 fifths is 3 16th. And 3 16th is actually lower than 9 over 40. So map outperforms ML. That's no surprise because the map rule is the optimal thing to do and the ML rule is just something to do. Um, the only downside to map is I need to know these hypothesis probabilities, which in practice I may not always have. And the other downside, which remember, maybe the costs of making a false alarm or misdetection are different. And then I need to incorporate those costs as well, which we haven't done here. And we don't need to, it's just a simple example to get us started.